Hello everyone and welcome back to another video on the channel. Today, we're going to be talking about Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer, starring Killian Murphy, Emily Blunt, Robert Downey Jr., Matt Damon, Florence Pugh, Jack Quaid, Kenneth Branagh, David Dismalchian, Rami Malek, Alden Ehrenreich, Dane DeHaan, Jason Clark, Casey Affleck, Josh Peck, Alex Wolf. Did, did I say Benny Safdie? There are so many people in this film. It's kind of insane, the ensemble that all flocked towards Christopher Nolan for this three-hour-long epic biopic about the development of the atomic bomb, the Manhattan Project, and a hyper-focused, you know, deep dive into the mind of Oppenheimer. I've heard a few other people say this, but this really is the culmination of all of Nolan's films, all leading up to a point, and this is just, this really is a feat for Christopher Nolan. And although I will say here off the top, it's not my favorite of Christopher Nolan's filmography because I do like his sci-fi films more than this one, I will say this might be his best movie because it's so well made. The cinematography, the acting, the directing, the editing, the score, the cinematography, everything about this movie is as good as it possibly can be. And it is just really an experience that I think a lot of people will be very, very happy to watch. So this will be, I guess, a spoiler review. I'm not going to hold back on talking about details in this movie, even though it is based on a true story. And I feel like most people understand the direction that this movie is. But I guess I'll be talking about the structure of the movie and the editing choices. And so I guess spoilers, but you know, this is based on a true story. So I guess... You know, it's, I guess, spoilers. But of course, I do want to mention the actors of this film all walking out on the premiere because the SAG after strike has started when the, the movie was premiering and now it's all in full effect. And so supports to the actors and to the writers. I'll have links in the description below for some resources where you can find some information about the, the strikes and also a place to donate to also help the strikes as well. So let's just jump right into the review for Oppenheimer. So like I said, this movie is about J. Robert Oppenheimer and his involvement in the development of the atomic bomb, but it's not just about the actual development of the atomic bomb because about at the two hour mark, because like I said, this is a three hour long movie and I had a timer going on just so I can keep track of time while I was at the screening that I was watching this at. And at pretty much exactly the two hour mark is when they tested the atomic bomb and everything after that point is the fallout of what happened after this you know, point in time. And the first hour is pretty much about the controversies with him and his involvement with the Communist Party and then that second hour is all the development and that third hour is going to be all the court cases and the the aftermath of what happened to Oppenheimer and how his government kind of dropped him behind and, and left him in the dust to just kind of scrap for himself and just completely abandon him and this really is a sprawling story about his life that has so much detail. This movie moves so incredibly fast and is so densely packed with so much information that it can be very overwhelming for that first half hour. And when it comes to Nolan's filmography, you know, one of his first films is just all about time. I think Memento is probably my favorite of all his films because of the way that it maneuvers through time and it plays out backwards and he is just a master at writing those sort of stories and balancing those sort of things and yes he has struggled in the past balancing those backwards timey-wimey stuff like in Tenet even though I do love that movie. I understand why a lot of people don't like it but his his way of manipulating time in his films and kind of using it as a tool in his movies is always very interesting. I think this movie also does it extremely well because it's bouncing back between different timelines and different points of Oppenheimer's life all mixed together. Yes, you have some black and white sequences when it comes to the more, I guess, objective based things. When Nolan was in interviews, he said that the black and white stuff is objective, whereas the color stuff can be subjective. And so I think that's an interesting way to put it. At first, I thought all the black and white stuff was just all the court case stuff with Downey Jr. But there's some stuff in the movie that also was in color with Robert Downey Jr. And so there's a little bit of give and take here. And I was really trying to hone in on exactly what the the intention was of these black and white sequences, but I guess the objective and the subjective of this filmmaking does make sense when it comes to his intentions. But it really does bounce around a lot and it does take a second to get used to, but as soon as you kind of fall into the flow of things wherever, you know, you have Robert Downey Jr. say a line of dialogue where it's like, oh, and then this happened, and then you flash back and you get to see exactly what he was talking about, or they kind of mention in kind of passing some events that happen in Oppenheimer's life, or even Oppenheimer himself when he's in his interrogation with the, the whole court system of trying to figure out whether he was a traitor or not, whether his involvement in the Communist Party means that he shouldn't have access to the government in the ways that he has, has been throughout the entire war process. And so you do kind of bounce between all these different things, and it all mixes together in a way that's very hard to describe here in a review. But in the movie itself, it does somehow work. It does somehow click together, and it does flow in a way that does make sense, whereas I think a lesser filmmaker would have gotten lost in the mix of things. Maybe a more generic version of this movie would have been more streamlined with the timeline of events, but I think the lot more interesting of a story is to bounce around like this. And as I said in my Barbie review, which I also have here on the channel, is that I think some people are watching this as a double feature just for the meme of things. I think some people went into Barbie as kind of the joke movie before we got into the real movie that is Oppenheimer, and to those people I said that 
I really hope that you find enjoyment in Barbie because of how subversive that script is and how surprising it can be for audience members where that movie might not necessarily be specifically for that audience. And I can say the same thing about this audience, where audience members for Barbie who are really excited for Barbie are going to this one for the meme that might be surprised at how thought-provoking and how complex this character is and how intricately weaving this movie is with how it weaves between the storylines and how it really is just as complicated as a film as Oppenheimer is as a person. I think those people will be surprised even though if this movie wasn't necessarily made for them. But let's get back into the structure of this movie. And like I said, that first hour of this film is mainly based on the controversies of this character and how he was closely related to so many people in the Communist Party. And when it comes to that subjective and objective type of storytelling that this movie has when it comes to, you know, the director writing this movie in first person, it is very much from the perspective of Oppenheimer. But the movie doesn't necessarily tell you what to think of Oppenheimer yourself. You can really put your own opinions towards this character because everything is subjective here, even though it is showing you objective truth. This movie does very much feel like a documentary. It's presenting you all the facts that we know about Oppenheimer, but it doesn't really let you into the insights of this character because Killian Murphy as a performer kind of has this look behind his eyes where you truly don't fully know what is going on in that head of his. And so it really does paint a picture of this character that is so complex, especially since it is bouncing between so many integral moments in his life, going from the very beginning when he's in school and he's having trouble in his lab classes because that doesn't interest him. And he even poisons an apple for his teacher and he has that darkness inside of him, these disturbing qualities that kind of make him such a interesting character to begin with, but also a very disturbing character and that remorse that he feels after putting the the cyanide into that apple and the way he rushes back to try to stop it from happening and it really does paint a picture into this this character in general because he created the atomic bomb he was the the spearhead of this project that killed hundreds and thousands of people that has left our world in such panic and fear of nuclear disaster because he created this weapon he unleashed this power to humanity and now we are all fearing of what it could mean for our future and you know he did this thing he created the atomic bomb and he does still feel remorseful for it because of all the loss of life that it has caused and it does make him such an interesting and complicated character just like it was interesting that he put that cyanide in the apple yet still felt remorseful for the thing that he did and try to take that back he can't take back what he did in world war ii with project manhattan and i think that is such an interesting thing and so when it comes to him and the communist party that is another thing where he was just kind of in the circles of you know these people he met his wife there his brother was a part of the party he was friends with a lot of these people he was in those circles he had an affair with somebody who was in the communist party and so whether or not all this stuff is fully true if he was a member of the party at some point whereas all the records show that he wasn't ever a member of the party maybe he was just interested in all the ideals of these other people and never really had a full opinion on his own the movie just presents you with all these ideas and all these facts about him as a person and you kind of decide whether or not you want to like him as a character whether or not you want to like his politics whether or not you want to like his remorse that he has by the end of the movie does he actually truly feel that or was that a mistake on his end was he wrong to do all these things i don't think this movie necessarily has an opinion on any of those things but it presents you in such a documentative type of way that feels like a documentary where us as an audience can imprint our own thoughts on Oppenheimer as a person through this film, which I think is a very difficult task to do in a film, but this movie somehow feels objective. I will say my favorite section of this movie was that second hour, because that is the actual development of the atomic bomb, and yes, it did take me a bit to get into this movie. That first half hour was very overwhelming and very much a a just attack at all these senses, all the audible and all the, the visual senses were being just overwhelmed and flooded with all this information. But when it gets to that second act of this movie, that second hour where you're actually developing the atomic bomb and that build up to the test that they're going to have in this movie where it's, you're introducing all these different characters and all these different actors as scientists or as people in the government and everything is just all coming together at a head in this middle section of the movie. This stuff was all thrilling and the actual test of the atomic bomb was so incredibly tense i have not been this tense in a movie in quite a while and for the full first two hours of this movie it's all just dialogue driven intensity that sets up this as the most important moments in the history of the world and you heard that that line from matt damon in the trailer was like this is the most important thing that has ever happened in all of humanity and you are kind of questioning the trailer saying like 
maybe this is a little bit too dramatic. Maybe they're building this up in such a way that will not feel as, you know, intense in the actual movie itself or in our real world in itself. But it really is. This movie is as intense and as important and as scary in our real world as it is presented in this film. And it just does feel earned because once that bomb is set off and the world is changed forever, it is haunting. And Nolan's commitment to practical effects in this movie is just, it's just insane. He's kind of just He's crazy for this. He set off a bomb that does kind of have that look and that feel of a nuclear explosion and the way that they hold back the sound for so very long and just kind of watching the flames swirl in the air and that mushroom cloud form in the sky and all the people looking in awe at what they have created and this explosion, this, you know, commitments to a project that is so dangerous and you get to feel all that weight on everybody's shoulders and then it hits you with that sound design. It is just, it is so incredibly thrilling. But what I think was even more powerful than that scene itself was when the bombs were finally dropped on Japan. And my background myself, I am half Japanese and so I didn't think I would get this emotional watching this portion of the movie, but I don't know, I, I just did because you feel this weight on Oppenheimer's shoulders where they use the bomb. He has lost his creation now in the hands of other people that he doesn't know if he can trust. Not necessarily the government if he can trust that, but if humanity can be trusted with this weapon. And when he's, you know, making his speech, looking at this crowd, all these people cheering that they have won the war, but it's all overshadowed in his mind by all the death and destruction that it caused, seeing the effects of what it did and all the, the sound design and all the visuals and the everything kind of brightening up and becoming overexposed and seeing the woman with all that makeup on her face and stepping in a body that is all burnt into ashes and it just it puts you into the mindset of Oppenheimer and it really does make you feel like wow how how could you be a person that has that much power in the world to have created this weapon of mass destruction what does it feel like to be in those shoes and I think that is an impossibly high pressure situation to be in that I don't blame him for immediately regretting this and you know turning his back on the government because he feels like his government has turned back on him and now this rivalry between him and Strauss who is played by Robert Downey Jr. is so investing I think that last hour of this film was not necessary I can see this movie again in a very similar way like Barbie if this didn't have an tour director like Christopher Nolan you know, backing this up and it had a more generic sort of biopic structure. And I think the movie would have ended at this point if that were the case. I think it would have ended at the end of the war and you would have had text on the screen basically saying that there were some court cases and he was kicked out of the government from having all these secrets and the fear of him being a communist and all this stuff happened after the fact and he was eventually forgiven by his government and they were kind of just patting themselves on the back rather than forgiving it for Oppenheimer himself but forgiving Oppenheimer for them and for their own peace of mind and how all that stuff kind of came to be by the ending of Oppenheimer's life and that would have just all been presented in text rather than you actually seeing it play out in all these court case scenes with Robert Downey Jr. giving such an incredibly powerful and just riveting performance that I do think will win an Oscar. If, if Robert Downey Jr. doesn't walk away with a trophy at the Oscars this award season, that will be kind of insane. Same thing with Killian Murphy. I think these two actors are brilliant. And even the the scene, like I said, if you didn't have any of this stuff after the fact of the, the bombing set off and the war being over, you wouldn't have that scene with Emily Blunt absolutely defending just so intensely you know, being by the side of Oppenheimer, even though he had hurt her in so many different ways with the whole Florence Pugh stuff. And so it's just all these things that happened in the last hour of this movie, even though it is past the whole development of the atomic bomb, and maybe some people might be lost by this last hour of the movie, I found it to be extremely riveting and intense, even when it was just all dialogue-driven sequences trying to figure out whether or not they were going to see Oppenheimer as guilty for all the things that he was accused of in this war. And so I just found all this stuff very, very interesting. And again, a lesser filmmaker wouldn't have dove into these things. I think this movie is greater because those things were explored. And the movie ends on an absolutely haunting note because there's a part of the beginning of the movie where Robert Downey Jr. is watching Oppenheimer and Einstein have a conversation by this lake and, you know, Einstein walks back and he starts to ignore Strauss and he starts to think that, you know, Oppenheimer is turning all the scientists against him and this leads to all the the petty arguments and all this this petty stuff that happened this rivalry between Robert Downey Jr. and Killian Murphy's characters in this film and you think that this conversation that they had was about him but maybe that conversation was a lot more important maybe it was more important than a singular man a singular rivalry maybe it was something about the development of this atomic bomb and what it could mean for the rest of the world and there's this idea where if you set off this bomb maybe this chain reaction never stops maybe it burns the entire world and you end the planet. Maybe you end humanity from your own destructive nature. And they have this conversation where maybe that is true. Maybe even though the world didn't get set on fire physically, 
maybe got set on fire metaphorically. Maybe the world can never go back to how it was. Maybe this race to build bigger and bigger bombs will eventually lead to the, to the destruction of humanity. And I find this implication to be absolutely terrifying and haunting. Yes, this movie feels like a horror movie at times because of how real it feels. And it just, it leaves you on a note of absolute despair that I think you need to maybe watch Barbie afterwards or maybe watch Barbie first so you don't have this whole impending doom left on your shoulders while you're trying to watch a very cheery movie. Or maybe you need this cheery movie to cheer you up from Oppenheimer. I don't know. I just think this double feature idea is kind of perfect because these movies couldn't be more different one leading on a hopeful note and the other leading on a very depressing and just terrifying note but either way i think these two films are very much director driven stories that feel very personal in some ways and very grand and epic in other ways and feel very much artistry driven which i think is the fights that the the wga and the sag guilds are trying to have against the AMPTP when it comes to the actual guilds itself and I don't think you get movies like this if you don't have these creative minds behind the scenes. But as I said at the top of this review I do think that this is truly one of Nolan's best made movies, one of his best films that he's ever done in the entire list of his filmography but it may not be my favorite of his because I do prefer like the the prestiges, the mementos, and the inceptions of his filmography versus this one is a three hour long dialogue driven epic war, not really even a war movie, just like an intense drama versus all his other films which are a little bit more palatable, which are a little bit more open to other audience members. I think this one is kind of put in a box where it feels very long, it feels very specific, and it feels like you need to be in the mood to watch this movie. And I think rewatchability is one of those things that is really going to define this movie for me in terms of where I would rank it in his filmography because I am actually dying to see this movie again just overnight after sleeping over this movie and just kind of thinking about it more and more. I am dying to see this movie again in IMAX to see where my thoughts on this movie finally lays but as of right now as of recording this review I do kind of prefer some of his other stuff more than this but I do agree this might just be his masterpiece in terms of it really is the buildup of his career to get to a point where he is a master filmmaker and he has a chance to make a three hour long epic drama that is all dialogue driven that feels just as intense as his action set pieces in some of his other films but this is where I pass it off to you guys and your opinions on this movie whether it comes to the moral conundrums of this movie when it comes to the performances of this movie do you think this movie will be a major Oscar contender I think it will easily, easily be nominated for Best Actor for Killian Murphy, even Best Supporting Actress for Emily Blunt for that one scene alone. She was really phenomenal in that. And of course, Best Supporting Actor for Robert Downey Jr., who better win the trophy for that performance because... Dang, he was so good. I'm sure this will be Nolan's best picture and best director wins that he has still not had yet in his career, which is kind of insane to think about. And so, what did you guys think of Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer? Very curious to hear all your thoughts in the comments down below. And like I said, I have my Barbie review up on the channel as well, so if you enjoyed this review, go over to that one. And also, subscribe to the channel if you do enjoy these videos from me. Leave a like on the channel. Like I said, comment down below, and I hope to see you all in my next one. Mm -hmm.